just carving up the Sierra there in this rain. Car 10, running in front of Chicotto here. Position 10, two laps two, down. Two laps down on the distance here. Just shows the level of performance, the smooth running of the uh, Gibson Motorsport operation. About to overhaul Bob Holden. And 73 uh, Corolla. Gary Brabham down there very, very quickly indeed. Well, it's been a topsy-turvy race so far for uh, the Sonovas Vitamin. Steve Alan Moffat's hanging in there with it. Alan, uh, thanks yes, for joining us. I know you're busy. No trouble, man. Tell us about uh, some of the problems. Well, the very first one, uh, all throughout practice, Charlie never locked up one break, and uh, then three laps into the race, he, he got a flat spot, cost him his tire, so that uh, set him back rather, rather nastily. Uh, well, Klaus uh, burned up a set of rain tires, um, and uh, Charlie stayed out for a long time on dry tires, uh, get, trying to outguess the weather. Finally, had to uh, succumb to the wet tires, and has just come in uh, prematurely as far as the fuel is concerned. Because every time we stop, we fill it up with the, with the juice, and. Uh, complaining about a misfire. I think there's so much water on the track, we may have got something into our Motronics. We've changed the spark plugs, splashed our CRC uh, 556 all over everything in the engine bay, and tried to uh, keep laughing, man. It's a great product. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's uh, always looked after his sponsors, Gary has, taken, Gary has taken over from uh, Charlie and back out there. Klaus is doing a great job. A bit too aggressive for my liking, from what I can see of him coming on to pit straight, but he's a professional driver, and their orders are to bring them home alive. Yes, I was going to say, it's early days yet, but can you remember a topsy-turvy um, 1000 like this? Well, only when I was behind the wheel myself, Mike, uh, Peter Brock and I had a hell of a uh, up and down in 1972, and the, the track got the better of me, and Peter went on to win in his XU1. But uh, no, in the last 10, 15 years, we haven't seen anything as nasty as this. Well, you've still got the two of them out there running. I hope uh, you can cure the problem with the electronics, and uh, thanks for joining us. We'll come back and talk to you a little later. Anytime. Glad to help, man. Bye. Thank you, Alan. Car 9. Just saw going out of shot there. Rejoined in 19th position, and look at that. Now that will give you some idea of the fog on top of Mount Panorama. As you said earlier, Wilco, a cloud has descended on top of it. <laughs> sure has. Vision down. Minimal levels. Now these are appalling conditions to be behind the wheel under any circumstances, let alone in a motor race like this. Just look at the way Klaus Needsfitz is fighting the Sierra. Every time he gets on the power, the back wants to break away. And of course it's so hard to control with that uh, turbo boost coming in so suddenly giving you a, what an extra 80, 90, 100 more horsepower in one big hit like that. Well Dick Johnson once described as going from a 140 horsepower 2 litre car to a 500 horsepower V8. Well, as you say with the click of a finger so trying to drive a car with those sort of throttle responses and conditions this difficult would take a real expert. Tough on the motor too, not just uh, difficult to keep control of the car, but when the wheels break loose like that and you get that big rush of revs, it's, it's hard on the motor. Absolutely. Car number four oh. is the oh. Oh. GIO <laughs> Nissan GTR, Rowan Onslow, Mark Gibbs. Left-hand side of it's been caved in. He's had a decent bang there. He's got no more ventilation problems because the window's gone completely on that uh, left-hand side of the car as well. Apparently Gibbs was involved in the same accident that damaged the back of the 17 car with John Bauer at the wheel. Uh, also involved Wayne Park, and that would explain this enormous dent in the side of the GIO car. Yeah, very concave, isn't it? Well, it's had a fair <laughs> working over. It's been some... At least the windscreen's clear now. Yeah, the windscreen O'Brien's fine, and they're putting the policy in for a check at GIO tomorrow. Should be able to get a cheap quote. The car continues. Mark Gibbs, Rowan Onslow, Bob Forbes racing. They were a fabulous job. They've been involved in the sport for many years. Bob himself, a former great race competitor. You can see the difficulty for these guys seeing out the back of their car, the front of the car. Look at the damage there on the GIO, quite a severe hit in the door. And if it's difficult to look at it on television, you can imagine it's doubly difficult inside the cockpit of a touring car. To BP Cutting, the Gibbs Onslow GIO machine. Gee, they look stable out of there, don't they? The four-wheel drives, it's all the power down on the road. They're just made for these very difficult conditions. Fred couldn't, couldn't have ordered anything better for this. We have the uh, O'Brien Brabham car coming back into the pits. Alan Moffat, who was talking to us, is telling us they're having problems uh, with the electronics in the car. 
Allen allowing uh, Rudy Eggenberger. You can see they're walking around the front of the car, the red and blue jacket. You can see the black tape over the brake ducts on the front spoiler of the car. That <laughs> trying to get as much temperature from the brakes as they can. It's very cold out there. Gary Brabham talking with Alan Moffat. Alan supervising. He knows what it's all about. He's driven here for so many years. Four Bathurst wins. Yeah, I'd say the um, expecting the second car in. So he's consulted and been sent on his way. They want to get Klaus in and get Klaus out pretty quickly. We mentioned before they only have the one gantry there, so they can't have the two cars in at once. They have to send this car out, the O'Brien Brabham car out, in order to get Klaus in and look after him. And clearly, that's what they've done. I hope it makes it uh, around to sound it a bit... Uh, Sounds like a severe misfire. Yeah. As Gary rejoined the circuit. Oh, oh, there she goes. You'd never forgive yourself sending him back out to bring the other one in and having one stall at the top of the mountain. It's remarkable after six years of the trouble of having with these cars. If we look at the uh, top points, number one, Richard Scaifley, Wallace and Crompton, second. Blancos Chicago move up to third. They're continuing their way forward. Car 17, Johnson Bow hanging on to fourth. Gibbs and Onslow, car four in fifth position. It's getting more and more drama here. Don't go away. I'm planning on a pit stop in the next lap or so. He might have to come in for one in the mobile uh, Commodore, car number 05. I'll show you an incident that happened uh, at, at Mazda uh, Forest Elba. Car 18 as well having a problem. That's the uh, Greek Crick, Terry Shield. And they were able to uh, be missed by the second of the mobile Commodores. We'll show you that as soon as we uh, have the incident. The Brock had a, a lose at Forest Elba. They must pull him in. That, that is definitely going to go at some oh, stage. Yeah, but when it goes, it'll be a problem. Well, day of dramas at Mount Panorama. Peter Brock continues. Tony Longhurst has certainly had a very eventful day so far, but he hasn't stepped into the car yet. Tony, it's thanks, thanks for joining us, mate. I know about another five or six laps before you get to race. Uh, we're going to try to get through to about 62, so I think about eight laps. How's the game plan going for the 25 car, considering the interruption this morning? Well, except for the interruption this morning, it's been spot on. Um, Johnny's doing a great job. He just did his fastest lap in the wet there. Uh, I don't know how, what you do about slowing these distance down there. <laughs> I don't think you can do anything about that, Tony. Yeah. The, the conditions, can you remember them being any more deplorable than uh, this year? The end of 87, those last, uh, the last hour wasn't too clever, but uh, it's very miserable. It's no good for anyone. All our boys, they're all wet. Everyone's going to have colds this week. But, uh, just got to soldier on. So what are the strengths now of the BMW? I think you can do anything about that, Tony. Yeah. The, the conditions, could you remember them being any more deplorable than uh, this year? The end of 87, those last, uh, the last hour wasn't too clever, but uh, it's very miserable. It's no good for anyone. All our boys, they're all wet. Everyone's going to have colds this week. But, uh, just got to soldier on. So what are the strengths now of the BMW and the wet and with you ready to step into the car? Our biggest advantage is now, uh, if I get in about lap 62, I can get the car up to uh, about lap 110 and uh, Johnny will get back in and finish the race. So our biggest strength now is just two pit stops to the end of the race. All right, well, that's what we were planning on. Tony, thanks very much for your time and good luck for the remainder of the day. Thanks, Mike. Tony Longhurst. There's a lot on his mind here today. Car number 25 now up to position number three. Brocky has been black flagged. Yeah, the difficulty there, I think Peter wouldn't have known that he had that damage. Pitt might have indicated it to him, but uh, then he of course had to, by that stage had to do another lap. Well, was we it? spoke about the incident. We caught it in the break. Here's what happened. There's Brocky coming up, and the second win, Percy Allen Grice car, number 16, stopped to avoid contact. How close was that? There were four of the major Commodore contenders in the one spot at the one time. Oh. That could have been a disaster for general fans. One down, all down there. It's Crick and Shield going back. There are only the four cars now on the front running lap. Richards, Crompton in the two Nissan cars. Johnny Giacotto at the wheel of the B&H BMW. And John Bauer in the 17 Shell Sierra. Remarkable performance from the little 2.5 BMW. It'll be a lovely thing to have in these conditions. 
Tony Chicotto at the wheel. Peter Brock, meanwhile, after the black flag, as Doug mentioned, comes into the gaffer uh, tape operation. Well, they might actually remove the whole front spoiler and put a new one on. There's been some damage to the mounts, as you can see. The mechanic struggling there. I wouldn't like to drive the car without the front on. <laughs> Absolutely not. Manuel Reuter. Richard Hay is our man in the pits, and Manuel Reuter ready to step into the car, Richie. Thanks, Mike. Yes, he, uh, he's just got into the car. Actually, Brocky's just alongside of me here. Mate, uh, what happened with the front spoiler? Uh, I think that uh, Alan Grice should have, should have a word with him. He might be uh, elected to Parliament. He's not elected the most po popular driver on the racing track, I can tell you. Uh, there's a train of cars with, uh, I think, Brad Jones in front, Larry Perkins and myself all trying to get by with Brad Jones. Uh, Grice came along and tapped me coming into the corner, uh, spun me around. And then to make matters worse, to insult to injury, he put it in first gear ground for sport off. It's been a pretty awful weekend for you so far, and the conditions aren't helping either. No, but I mean, in those situations, you drive with some grey matter. Oh, thanks, Rocky. <laughs> thanks, Richie. Just come right out and say it, Pete. Don't beat around the bush. <laughs> Rocky not too impressed as the new spoiler goes under the front of the 05 car. The Bridgestone Triple M people will be pleased to see that. I'd like to have, have a look, look at, at the replay. Yeah. When we last saw that incident, we didn't pick it up early enough to... Uh, I mean, Rocky was already halfway through the spin. We wouldn't know who initiated it. He knows, it seems. I'll let him debate that with the Honourable <laughs> Member for Broadwater at a later time. <laughs> the right Honourable Gracie. But he's... Um, quite unimpressed. Bradley Jones, meanwhile, hard at work. Car 15, the second of the whole racing team Commodores in behind Chicago here. See, look at that BMW under brakes. This car, the most effective car at Sandown as far as the 1993 cars were concerned. Uh, come under the bridge, Chicago leading Seaton and Bradley Jones. Peter Brock, meanwhile. There goes Manuel Reuter in the 05 Brock uh, Commodore. So they've repaired the damage incurred at Forest Elba. And the Falcon and the Commodore, the future of Australian touring car racing, cut their way through the spray. Manuel uh, Reuter, Brock had a huge rap on him. And uh, someone suggested he may have picked the name out of the Barcelona telephone directory. <laughs> But he said, no, he has uh, a fabulous record. And since Reuter arrived, he's done nothing else but sing the praises of Mount Panorama. He said, it's a fabulous racing circuit. Is Brock uh, sorting it out with the Holden Racing Team man, Wally Story? He's you don't obviously see that a lot with Peter Brock, do you? No, he's really laying down the law there. Something uh, that incident at Forest Airway obviously upset him quite a lot. Making his point very clearly to Wally. It's just not another Wally story either. And Brocky's saying, no, no, he did this to me. But I tell you what, he probably didn't mean it, so Brocky's calmed down, had a big laugh about the whole thing. <laughs> Standard mobile cup of tea. Not the best of days for Peter. He probably just wants to get his hands on Bryce's Akubra. <laughs> yeah, and pull it down. <laughs> right down. Well, there's plenty, be <laughs> plenty being said. Is our race leader as he heads up uh, Mountain Straight. Jimmy Richards, the Raymaster from New Zealand. What a record here in the great race. He continues to lead on our Caltex race score. Neil Crompton in the second of the Winfield Nissans runs in second. 25 is Johnny Chicotto at the wheel of the Tony Longhurst Benson and Hedges BMW. John Bow at the wheel of the Dick Johnson Shell Sierra runs in fourth spot. Mark Gibbs and Onslow fifth in car number four. Don't go away. There's a lot more to come. Australia's great race to two is 1,000 continues, lap 57 of 161. And this is the leader in the 1600cc category.